I see, I see a number of tutorials out there for beginners to start Emacs, but um, there's not a lot of tutorials out there for Emacs power users or power users in general. Um, I know a lot of people don't quite understand Emacs. They don't sort of understand the power of it. They don't understand that it's basically a Lisp interpretation engine that enables you to do um, many very powerful things, including, you know, create uh, documents and, you know, edit and debug in your favorite programming language. So I just wanted to offer these tips. I'm a longtime Emacs user. I've been using it for uh, more than 30 years now. And I just like the way that it works, and I like the uh, amount of control, customization, and power that it gives me. Uh, I don't get into the Emacs versus VI uh, war because I use VI as well. I use it ambidextrously on the command line, but I definitely don't think uh, when it comes to having a powerful, rich environment, VI can offer the same things that Emacs does. Uh, many people, since they don't really try Emacs, they just think it's kind of a different heavyweight version of VI. They don't understand all the depth of features, but um, what I want to do is show some commands that maybe uh, certain power users or beginning users who are uh, kind of experienced in the Unix system w will be able to understand and enhance their workflow. So the first one I want to show is meta x grep and rgrep. So if I have um, a particular package, I really like the idea to be able to recursively grep through this as a programmer. This is something I use all the time. So let's say I'm looking at this package and I want to find something in particular in this package. So I know there's going to be some contracts in this package, so let's see if I can find all the contracts. So I'm going to just search for contract, and I know the contracts are going to be located in Solidity files, so let's look at star.sol. And I don't want to get every sol file, let's just look at the one that's in the contracts folder. So I'm going to include that as the base directory. And that's going to bring up a list of every occurrence of the term contract. And then I'm going to use the con command sequence, control X, backtick. And what that's gonna do is bring, bring me to the first hit. So the backtick is the one that on a US style keyboard is below the tilde. It's right next to the one uh, on the number, um, the number line of your keyboard. If I hit control X, backtick again, it'll bring me to the second instance. Now you'll notice that my um, command wasn't that useful because what happened is I found all the occurrences of contract, but these aren't contracts in the software. So what I want to do is I actually want to run it again. So I'm going to use um, control X, escape, escape. And what that's going to do is bring up the redo buffer. So it's going to show me the command that I just ran. And what I want to do is modify that. So I'm going to put this little caret up here and now it's going to be a regular expression. So that means Search for every occurrence in the same location, excuse me, in dot star dot soul files um, for anywhere the word contract occurs at the beginning of a line. So let's find that. And now I've actually, okay, so here, this is a contract. This is a contract. And so I can sort and filter through, <coughs> excuse me, um, that way. So this is really useful in programming. This also works with compiler error. So when you're compiling your code and you do meta x compile, you, um, it can sometimes bring up compiler errors. And if you do control x backtick, it's very similar to the grep where it will um, kind of cycle through the errors. And that's extremely useful as a programmer. Um, similar to like many powerful IDEs also do in modern times, but Emacs has done this uh, for decades. Let's look at another example. Um, something that I find that's uh, frequently useful, um, especially in Python programming, is the ability to indent rigidly. So if I do meta x indent rigidly, um, it makes my um, region that I've selected 
And of course, if you're uh, a power user, you know that I select the region by hitting control space, setting the mark, and navigating my cursor to the extent of the region. Now, if I use my arrow keys, you can see that it's trying to indicate left, right, um, etc. I can control the indentation of that region. So like I said, that's super useful in Python programming where every where an entire code block needs to have, maintain the same indentation. Um, but it's, in, it's really useful in programming in general, and it's really useful in formatting text doc documents in all kinds of places. So indent rigidly is something that's great to use. Um, the third feature that I want to describe is how you kind of find help in um, Emacs. And so there's two primary ways. So one is describe mode. This describes sort of the commands and the behavior that I should expect from the current mode that I have. So this is where I can learn quick keystrokes on how to do things. And you can see that this mode that I'm running is based on the C mode because a lot of these uh, macros and functions that it implements are C mode functions. Um, but essentially, you know, this, these are things that you could do um, and keys that you could know that are bound for using this mode. Another useful um, describe is the describe function. So for example, I want to do kind of my fourth um, tip, which has to do with uh, like sorting. And you know how would we sort buffers? So let me bring up some data. I'm going to go to another repository here. OK, so I have this buffer. And um, so I might want to know how to you know, sort this data if I'm playing with it in different ways. Uh, so I can do meta x, describe, and I hit tab, function, enter. And then I want to sort. And if I hit tab, it'll show me all the tab completion. And I can see that there's a couple different things. Um, sort numeric fields looks interesting. Sort fields looks interesting. So let's um, describe sort fields. So it says sort lines lexicographically in the region based on the argth field of each line. OK. So um, after I take a minute to kind of understand what that means, I think I can get it. If I enter an arg, so I'm going to do control U, and let's say let's sort lexicographically on the third line, uh, the third column, I'm sorry, and let's go ahead and do our sort fields. Now, I also want to show you, um, we can abbreviate this. SO-F means the same thing. It maps to the same thing. And uh, it says, oh, there is no region. So let's set a region. So I hit control space, um, meta, greater than symbol, and this navigated to the entire buffer. So now the entire region is selected. Now I'm going to control U to enter the third field. And then now I'm going to do my meta x SOF, and it's going to sort. OK, but that wasn't interesting because it was already sorted. So let's do something uh, a little bit more interesting. Let's do um, meta x sort numeric fields. And I think we can just get away with that. OK, and what that did, it defaulted the arg as is, is the first character. Um, and so now I've sorted numerically by the first column. And let's control x, control x selected the whole thing. I actually want to sort fields three again, because I actually want it to be in sorted order. OK. And then um, I could also, so the next tip I want to offer is the shell command on region. So I currently have this selected. And let's say I didn't know about the sort fields command. I could actually do meta x shell command on region. And there's all kinds of things I could do. Sometimes I do word count. Um, if I'm writing an essay or something and I need to know I have 900 words, I could use word count. In this case, let's do the sort, sort dash k3 and sort the results. And then that what that did is it opened up a buffer with the results in here. So now 
you could, without changing this data, compare it with the sorted version, or you could um, just select this whole buffer and copy and paste it and use that to replace, but it's easier with the inline sorting. I might also want to search forward in this file. So control S searches forward and that's pretty useful. Probably most Emacs users will know that. But if I wanna find the next occurrence, I just hit control S again and it will cycle through all the instances, which is really useful. If I've gone too far, like this happens in programming all the time where I'm you know, editing some gigantic file and I want to scroll back after I've searched beyond the point and I wanna look at, then I just can hit um, control R. So control R is search backward. And now I'm searching backward for the same thing. So I can cycle through my files that way, just based on this keyword. I might also want to replace, let's say I want to replace every instance of the number 14 with something else. Well, that would be replace string. But oftentimes when we do a replace string, that, uh, is a little bit brute force and it may replace things we don't want to do. So a safer way to do it is to do query replace string. Um, qu query replace. Okay, and then query re replace is going to prompt us. So let's say we replace every instance of 14 with 14. Um, it's going to go through and ask us yes, yes, yes. We can say yes and then no. Um, to do our replacement. And then I just wanna show you one more uh, really kind of power user tip or trick with Emacs. I'm gonna to go to the scratch buffer. The scratch buffer is where we start. It's the um, place that Emacs loads up and you can use this for all kinds of um, purposes, you know, copying and pasting text that you want to save for later, or, you know, sometimes I'm editing a function, I want to remove the function, I paste it into my scratch buffer. And then, you know, I can remove it, do some building or, or changes to the code, and then, you know, copy and paste it back out of the scratch buffer into it. But I want to show you this mode here down at the bottom, it says Lisp interaction. So we'll use our describe mode that we that we learned about. And basically it says it's a major mode for evaluating Lisp forms. So what this really means is that this is a powerful Lisp interpreter. And what I like to do is use Lisp and use uh, Emacs as a Lisp calculator. So let's say I have a column of numbers that I wanna sum. I can control J to find the answer. And let's say I'm doing some complicated expression and I want to divide that by a thousand. Let's say that I want to multiply that sum with some other um, sum or, or I can do that, right? And so I'm typing control J to evaluate. I can evaluate one part of it um, and you can see that I'm using integer arithmetic here, but <clears throat> basically this allows me to use Emacs as a Lisp interpreter REPL so that I can do all kinds of simple math and, you know, anything that I might want to calculate. They can also type, um, certain functions that it might be useful, um, Uh, to see the results. And so, you know, it's just a powerful desk calculator. Emacs does have a calculator mode, so that can be useful too. But sometimes I actually forget how to use the calculator and I forget all the command sequences. So it's easier for me to just remember how to do it directly in Lisp. It's interesting too, because you can actually modify your um, Emacs environment by setting variables or modifying mode lists and things like that from this interaction buffer. So this would be a good way to test out your init files.
So that's what I wanted to share, kind of just a quick tutorial on some power user Emacs tips and tricks.